as was Dick Neitz. Uh, Tom, you were in attendance, uh, two Toms, Tom Barron, Tom uh, Nicanello were in attendance. Um, I am familiar with the request only because of the fact that it was uh, uh, initially presented to me via email, or presented to Sandy and then to me via email. So, uh, Tom, uh, since you two sat on it uh, back in 2018, do you have any questions uh, of our uh, petitioner's representative? No, I <coughs> No, I have no uh, no questions. Okay. Here is the wire, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to just bring Dick up to speed if we could. Uh, thank uh, Hello, Dick. How are you this evening? So, uh, Dick, we have been asked by uh, Mr. Tad if to consider a request for extension of a matter you sat on last year uh, when the similar request came in. It's petition 4655, 27 Briar Circle, South Yarmouth, Mass. And if I can summarize it, the uh, plan is to condominiumize the property. Unfortunately, the bank isn't being cooperative in agreeing to subordinate uh, uh, the, their mortgage to the condominium documents and as well to, uh, you know, make sure that a, a foreclosure wouldn't result in foreclosure of all the units. So have I summarized that accurately? Yes. All right. Do you have, since you sat on it back then, do you have any questions? Yeah. Of, and and right. I know you didn't sit, Susan, but, uh, um, you know, you kind of heard just what it was about. Do you have any questions? That you, no. I, I have none. I, I would just point out if that it's looked upon favorably by the board tonight. It's got to be a nunc pro tonc order, okay? Yes. And it needs to be referenced as a nunc pro tonc order. Okay. Because uh, you run the problem of that. Uh, having elapsed, so, but if we nunk pro tonk it back to September 13, then it shouldn't be an issue for you in your title going forward. So has anybody uh, cared to uh, consider a motion concerning this request for an additional one-year extension? And, and to be specific, that it'd be a one-year extension to September 13, 2020. Uh, so moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. And the board care to have any discussion before moving it along to a vote. And hearing none, all those in favor of the motion made by Mr. Nicanella, seconded by Mr. Barron, to, ex to allow the extension of the special permit for one additional year to September 13, 2020, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. Thank you. And I look forward to getting a, again, a nunk proton. Yes, you will. Thanks. Uh, don't walk away, please, because you're next up on the agenda as well. So our uh, first petition for hearing this evening is that of 48, <coughs> excuse me, 4822. Good evening. Good evening. Hyannis Yacht Club, 490 Ocean Street, Hyannis, Mass. That property is located, uh, has a location of a, a 211 Mid uh, Tech Drive, West Yarmouth, Mass property located in a zoning district B3, the APD, and the RMDOD. I love these acronyms. <laughs> so uh, the applicant this evening is seeking a special permit under zoning bylaw 202.5. Everybody hear me all right back there? I said I ought to put my hearing aids in so I can hear myself. Uh, mm. 203.5 and 406, and from use table 202.5, uh, paragraphs 5, 3, uh, rather F3 and F4, and a variance from zoning bylaw 202.5, uh, uh, use table or designation L3 for mechanical repair in the B3 and APD. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Would you tell us uh, who you are and what your interest in this petition are? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Paul Tardiff. I represent the applicant Hyannis Yacht Club. And seated with me is uh, Brian Mullins, who's the general manager over at the Yacht Club. Um, and you are uh, accurate in reciting what the relief uh, sought tonight is. The property uh, we're talking about is at the end of Mid-Tech Drive uh, in the B3 zoning district and the Aquifer Protection Zoning District. It's also in that RD, uh, or RM, whatever it is. That's just recreational marijuana. I went, that's not the yeah. point tonight. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that's a thriving <laughs> district, yeah. Yes, it's a, um, the, uh, this property is actually currently improved with a 100 foot by 98 foot steel building with concrete slab and it has eight bays, four on each side, one, uh, four facing the north, four facing the south. Um, the petitioner plans to lease four of the bays uh, all on the north side of the building. The property itself contains just over 40,000 square feet. 
the Hyannis Yacht Club, if you don't know, is a, a private club uh, in Hi on Hyannis Harbor at 490 Ocean Street in Hyannis. Uh, founded in 1939, has approximately 600 yacht club members uh, and more than 5,000 captain's table association members. Uh, the yacht club uh, is basically the sailing arm of the club. The uh, captain's table association is the people who like to go to the restaurant up there. Uh, in, in a nutshell, right? I'm not yeah. correct. All right, um, and it does encourage uh, both young people and older people uh, in the uh, activities of sailing and boating. And what do you, what do you consider an older person? Fifty-three. <laughs> Thank you. Just, cu just curious. Yeah, that's my birthday. That's just no. Um, uh, during the summer season, everything is uh, everything happens over at the Hyannis facility. There is really nothing that's going to happen much at this facility, but it's in the off season when everything moves to the land, and that's right about now. Um, the club stores its boats and um, has minor repairs done at least locations in Hyannis. Um, the the club itself owns its own boats. Um, this is not going to involve any members' boats at all. Uh, any one of those members have their own, they're responsible for that <laughs> themselves, but these are the boats that the, the club owns. They have a 31-foot Downey's committee boat for racing. Uh, the two Crosby-style launches to get people in and out. 12 small power boats. Uh, they're either 12 feet to 21 feet, and those are on trailers. We have six 22-foot sailboats on trailers and also 18 14-foot sailboats on trailers. Um, these are, again, owned by the club, not members. Uh, the staff con is consists of between two and three um, people who do the repair work to the boats in the winter months, um, which includes using acetone, gel coat, and fiberglass resin, um, nothing more than a five-gallon bucket um, or a one-gallon bucket. There's no 55-gallon drums here. Paints and varnishes are in those smaller containers. Uh, any mechanical work that's done on the boats are done at private facilities, either in Hyannis uh, or at Char Custom Boat in Yarmouth Port uh, behind IFAW, but it won't be done at this site. Uh, any major repairs are done by private businesses off-site. Um, right about now, the boats are taken out of the water, uh, trailered and brought to their appropriate sites for power washing uh, and the bottoms of boats. Again, not to be done at this location. Uh, char boats will winterize the boat engines and exterior tanks are drained uh, and removed from uh, approximately 10 power boats stored at the club. Then they're delivered up to the Hyannis Yacht Club facility, which would be this mid-tech drive for minor fiberglass repairs, minor paint touch-ups, varnishing bottom paint and shrink wrapping. Uh, in May, the boats then go back to the Yacht Club uh, in Hyannis, and there they remain till October. The four units themselves, uh, that's a combined of uh, 4,900 square feet. There's also 24 parking spaces outdoors uh, that they'll have access to. Um, of the four units, they plan to use them as follows. Uh, unit E, which would be one. Uh, that's for the storage of historical records, china, flatware, glassware, tabletop, uh, paper products, holiday decorations, sales, and those types of things. That's mostly for the restaurant piece. Uh, unit F would be to store the two launch boats. The tanks uh, in those boats are in the boat themselves, and they will be filled, and that is by regulation of the fire department. Uh, they can't be empty because of the uh, trapping of vapors, so they have to have them full. Uh, unit G will be boat repairs. That will be re repair cracks, wax the boats, bottom paint. And then Unit H will be, uh, again, boat repairs and some storage of some sailboats that aren't already trailered and stored outside. Uh, we have provided you with a detailed floor plan for each of the units in the submission. Um, any of the trailered boats obviously will be stored outside. Um, uh, we also have submitted a plan to you that shows the containment system that's going to be installed, uh, which was going to connect each of the four units to a tight tank that will be located outside, a 1,500-gallon <coughs> tight tank outside that. To a what? A tight tank, which is, you know, will not be drained into the ground. It will be alarmed as well. So as it gets, uh, I think it's three-quarter full, there will be lights and also um, audible sounds of the, the need for pumping. The building is already uh, equipped with a sprinkler system. That's operational. That was just tested, and that's um, that's ready to go. Um, there's also a lockbox for the fire department already on site, 
and uh, that will be uh, arranged with the fire department for the keys to be available in case they need to get in there. Um, as for the materials that are, will be stored there, uh, first of all, we have the boats themselves that have to be full. Uh, the, 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 the tanks have to be full. We cannot leave them empty. Uh, that's a total of 275 gallons just on those boats alone. The materials for the boat repairs themselves are about 45 gallons total. Uh, what the Board of Health recommends is that you always are operating one bucket here and have one bucket on the shelf. So if it's a five gallon here, there's a five gallon on the shelf because you never know how full or empty that bucket will be. So they double that to about, they said 95, 96 gallons. So that's a total of 371 gallons. Um, we were uh, before the Board of Health on September 16 of this year <coughs> and asked to have storage of up to 400 gallons. We just rounded up. Um, the, uh, I believe you have the memorandum from the Board of Health dated October 2, 2019, um, which uh, basically summarizes what that meeting was about and what they approved uh, unanimously, by the way. Um, and, and again, kudos to Mr. Lawson for the great job he's done on these memos, as he always does. And uh, any decision that this board, uh, if, if this board does grant it, this uh, decision will be attached to the um, decision that gets recorded at the registry. Um, there are eight conditions on page seven, I believe. Uh, we have no objection to those except for number eight. Number eight require it says all other units in the building must achieve compliance with building fire and health department regulations uh, because we don't own the building we really can't be responsible for what happens in the other units i think that you know we would be asking that we'd be more than happy to abide by one through seven on that um, i believe the special permit in this case is warranted under uh, 406.5.3 we, we think we meet the criteria. We're not going to pose a threat to the public drinking water. I think that they have a lot of containment, both inside and that uh, new uh, tight tank that's going to be installed. Um, we also, before the site plan review team uh, on August 20th of 2019, I believe you have those notes as well. So uh, I don't think that the work uh, is going to, uh, as for the variance, I should say, uh, that was requested. That was. Um, as an abundance of caution, Mr. Uh, Grills uh, asked me to put that in there as well in case any of the work that I just explained to you does rise in your minds to the level of mechanical work. Um, any mechanical uh, work done on the motors and boats are going to be off-site anyway. Uh, we're just talking about fiberglassing, resin, bottom boat painting, which I don't think is mechanical, but he was, wanted to make sure that we included it in case. Um, if, uh, if it's needed, we hope that uh, we've met that criteria as well. If not, I think uh, we could uh, withdraw that without prejudice. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, answer those. Also wanted to let you know that um, the Commodore from the Yacht Club, Bill Abbott, is here as well in the front row with us. So, Oh, he can feel free to come right up too, if he'd like. <coughs> we certainly welcome the, Thank you. the esteemed leader of the club. Good evening. Sir. Mr. Barron, any questions of our petition or its representative? Yes, I have uh, a couple. Um, one, um, on the application, uh, looking for a special permit, you're, you've listed both uh, 202.5 F3 and F4. Uh, why F4? That is what the building department classified our uses to be. Uh, water, water transportation to me would seem to be more appropriate if you were talking about this facility at, on, at, at a dock side. I agree. Um, uh, we're, we're talking here about uh, a dry land application uh, for, and, and it, it, <coughs> does, it does not compute for me um, why that designation is is shown. I think uh, the billing department classifies the F4 use as not only water transportation but boat storage as well under their their guide. That might be why um, they, they included that. I would have thought that the F3 was uh, sufficient for uh, mechanical uh, storage of, 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 of uh, vehicles. The other question I have uh, pertains to the um, uh, site, site plan review. Um, 
The question that was brought up about the fire sprinkler system uh, being at a level that would not allow um, protection of the wooden structures above that level of the of the of the sprinklers. Uh, so, how have, how has that been addressed? Well, I think what the question was was that the sprinklers are located on the ceiling. It's just that there's a mezzanine there, mm -hmm. and the question was if the water can flow through the mezzanine to get anything below it. That's that was the question, I believe, right? Correct. And I think that there are um, drains that are going to be installed on the mezzanine level, and we'll work that out with the fire department. So, all right. Well, you you've apparently addressed it. Um, the um, <coughs> one outstanding um, question I have uh, concerning the recommendations by by Board of Health is number five. Um, no, me no mechanical uh, repair of vehicles or boats is allowed. Now, that is totally in contravention of L4 in the, in the use table. Um, L3. So, uh, the, the L3. Right. Yeah. Um, it, did you have some accommodation with, uh, with Board of Health on, on that and why? And, and why are we totally avoiding uh, what's already been set in the bylaws? Um, we, we don't think what we're going to do there <coughs> rises to a mechanical level. I think it's more just touch-ups, and I don't think it's, I think mechanical as, as would be if we were going to take motors apart and rebuild them and that type of thing, and that's not what we're doing. We're having that all done off-site. What's to prevent that from being done in the future? Because there's a commit condition that says we cannot do that, and I don't think that that is something that we want to do. All right. Those are my concerns, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Mr. Nicanello. Uh, no questions at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Martin. Uh, I was uh, <clears throat> looking at what the community development and planning mentioned about the uh, or the buffers. Is there any plan to, to uh, upgrade those a little bit? I, I guess there are some shrubs and trees there now in the, in the front. front. Yeah. <clears throat> the plan only shows two trees. Uh, and I think actually there's more than that there now, right? <clears throat> so uh, I guess is the idea, is that going to come into conformance at all? Or is it going to be cleaned up at all? Or our intention And being cleaned up, I don't mean removed. Yeah. No, our intentions is to clean up the outside of the okay. property. We're going through a lease purchase right now. If we're able to move forward, we're going to do a lease and purchase hopefully within the next two years, and we're okay. going to do the landscaping and all that, so it's okay. like the rest of the street. <clears throat> Otherwise, as long as the Board of Health issues are... Are, are dealt with and uh, petitioners happy with, and I don't see any other problems. Thank you. Ms. Britta. Mr. Chairman, just some clarifying questions. Um, the fuel that will be stored on site, is it all flammable? It's hazardous, yeah. So yes. it's considered, okay. The, and the holding tanks that they're going to be in on these boats, has anyone looked at the condition of those? holding tanks how old are they are they 20 years old brand new so that we could I don't have the <coughs> I don't have the age of, of the tanks but I know our boats go through um, a full inspection every year mm -hmm. to do any necessary repairs Who does the inspection uh, char custom boating mm -hmm. yes and they would recommend if they thought one of those tanks was in a weak condition that absolutely they would be replaced. okay yes. so you're fairly certain that what will be on site is not corroded or, or compromised in any way? Correct. Okay. Um, just a few other questions. The, uh, it says in, in um, Mr. Lawson's memo on page four, three of the boats will be stored outside. Are they going to be protected in any way, covered or, uh, you know, from the elements, or are they just going to be out there in the open? They're going to be shrink-wrapped. Okay. So that... That would certainly help with the protection of the tanks that are inside the boats oh, yeah. also. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, page five. It says, vehicle washing and fueling are not part of this proposal. Do you anticipate coming back and asking for... Okay, so that's that was just a clarifying statement on his part. No, we're not into that business. We outsource all that and have the boats cleaned and serviced and winterized and brought to us, and we just store those. Okay, and then um, solvent rags and brushes, they're going to be properly containerized? Correct. Rags as well as all the brushes used? Correct. Okay, and then 
All materials will be protect, must be protected from vandalism. Are you going to have cameras on site to, as part of the protection plan? Uh, we have, we're alarming the building, and everything's stored inside. Well, some <coughs> things are going to be stored outside because some of these Sail boats will be outside. Oh, they're sailboats. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gonna, I'm just it says it's going to be protected from vandalism, so. Yeah, we can have cameras out there. Well, it's I'm actually not, no, I'm I know it's not, it. but I mean, uh, quite frankly, I haven't thought about it. But okay. uh, you know, it's a solid point. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it says any waste material must be properly disposed of by a licensed hazardous mm -hmm. waste hauler. How, how is that going to be monitored or enforced? Do you file a document with the town saying this is the hauler, or how do we know that's going to be enforced? On our spill plan, we had to specify who, uh, okay. who our hauler is. All right, and then a sufficient supply of absorbent materials. What is a sufficient supply? Is there some sort of formula? Um, not that I'm aware of, but I know um, we have two contartons of, uh, forgive me, I'm not exactly what it, sure what it's called but it's the the concrete the concrete it's the white tray. yeah mm -hmm. so we we tried to over design the uh, the warehouse to make sure we were okay. protected and had plenty of backup product all right I, I would just like you to just follow up and make sure that there is if there's a formula square feet versus yeah. one bag so many square feet that you have that so I know <laughs> I I will check but I did uh, give a tour of the facilities mm -hmm. to uh, Carl Lawson and the chair of the uh, Board of Health and showed all the supplies that we had okay. and, and they everything, were and they were very pleased. And any containment is going to be one and a half times the number of gallons. Okay, so you think you will have a sufficient, okay, that's, yes. and then, um, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank sure. you. I, I have a couple. <clears throat> My reading of the uh, conditions are, um, and, and as well I know uh, from your presentation that you had some concerns over this condition eight. Do I understand from the email uh, of this late afternoon today that the condition eight is now being waived by the Board of Health? Well, I read that email and I thought I was gonna open this thing up and it was gonna be gone, but it, the, the one that he attached still had number eight in it. so. If, if it's if, if they're if they're going to agree to get, that's fine. I just well, I, I just don't know how in the world anybody could impose upon this petition or the ob, ob, uh, obligation to go out there and assure that somebody over whom they have no control is somehow compliant. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just a silly uh, condition in my mind. Mm -hmm. it, it makes absolutely no sense. And uh, we're not in the business of forcing people to take care of their neighbor's business when they hopefully are just taking care of their own and <coughs> so uh, and doing it adequately. Uh, I, I uh, personally cannot uh, uh, even understand how that sort of a, uh, a, a condition uh, could be one uh, enforced by this board, uh, but more importantly, who are we to tell you to go out to your neighbors and tell them to be good citizens? You know, I, I just don't think that's the way this ought to work, personally. I do have a couple of questions about your presentation, if I could, please. And, and I'll tell you, uh, let me just, before I go too far, uh, on that condition eight, I would uh, vote not to include it uh, in this package and suggest that to this board, because it's just something we're not in the, we can't do. Who are we? <coughs> I'm, I'm confused by this external, am I understanding that there's an external storage tank? It's an underground tank. It's on the outside of the building. Yep. But it will pick up from floor drains within each of the four units and drain out to it. Okay, so when I'm using uh, paint varnish and I spill a, a pint on the floor, is that gonna be washed down the floor drains into this tank? Uh, no, the, the the first spill response is to s soak it up if they have materials or rags to get it up. If it if it happens to get to the drain, it will then be uh, another secondary containment into that tank and will not go any further. I heard uh, power washing. Is there going to be any power washing of these boats at this location? No, not at this location. I, I'm not sure I understand this containment tank or what its purpose is. If in fact there's no liquid that's going to be uh, used in any any water, uh, at least it used, is it the expectation that the only thing that will go into this containment tank is water? No, if, if any of the hazardous materials that are stored inside the building happen, let's say overnight, uh, a tank lets go. If there's any type of fuel that hits the floor and drains, it's going to drain into that floor drain 
go out into a tight tank and we'll never get into the ground. So how are we going to know that the that the uh, pipes that lead from the floor drain uh, to a, uh, a apparently a tank that has been there for a while, right? No, this is going to be installed. This is okay. brand new. Uh, is the piping all going to be new then? Yes. And that will be inspected by whom before? Building? B uh, building and probably uh, uh, Board of Health as well. Okay. And what sort of tank is it going to be? <coughs> 1,500 gallon. Yeah, I want to know what it's made out of, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we're talking about this is this is in the APD, and that's my only concern here is the APD. It's con It's an H20, so you can drive on it. It's concrete. 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 Mm -hmm. Is it lined? I think I, I think it, it is. is. That's the yeah, I think because yeah. it because of the type of tank it is. Yes. Okay. And then, and then the, you, you indicated there were alarms when it reached a certain percentage of volume. Is that seventy-five percent of volume? Correct. And when those alarms go off, what does that do for us? Uh, that tells him that he's going to call someone to get that thing pumped. Okay, so those alarms are only internal to this location. <laughs> yes, okay, and there's so they don't go off over at the. No. Uh, uh, but how often is this place going to be inspected once things are stored there? I'll have staff there on a regular basis. Why there's there's boats there, the biggest possible issue, there'll be staff there on a daily basis, in and out. On a daily basis? On a daily but, basis. But, but starting in May or April and May, right. the, all the boats are gone. No, I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about when they're in there from October to May. They'll be staff and, there. And, and that if the alarms go off and there's nobody to hear them, it's like, does, it can, does a tree make noise when it <laughs> falls in the woods and nobody there to hear it, you know? I mean, yes. it's no good and the alarm's no good if it only rings in one place and there's nobody there to hear it. Yeah, they'll be on staff for those hours and on those days that it's, it's there. Right. So you're indicating that there will be a staff member of your facility there daily. They'll be daily. Now, I don't want to mislead you either. If it's a holiday like Christmas, yeah, there's not going to be a, a staff member there. Yeah. So I don't want to. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> anticipating any, any uh, uh, you know, catastrophe. Right. But what you don't anticipate is what comes back to bite you, you know. So uh, it, it, let's say just for giggles that, uh, you, you know, uh, the tank was three, uh, just under three quarters full. It's a 1,500-gallon tank, right? Right. And so it's just under full, and then uh, a 400-gallon uh, 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 fuel storage tank within the boat were to let go and somehow get out of the boat, which is far, very unlikely. I, I appreciate that. But that would then uh, cause it to go over at 75% capacity, in fact, overflow the tank. Right. right. But it's a 1,500-gallon tank, and the maximum for each boat in gallons is 40 gallons. Oh, so yeah. it's not hundreds of gallons. It's okay. 40 gallons in two boats. That's 80 gallons. Okay. The Board so of Health has allowed us 400 total, total gallons. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. All right. So my concerns are probably not great. Could you commit to at least inspecting the property uh, uh, once weekly? Yeah. That's not an issue. As a condition? Absolutely. Maybe other board members have other feelings on it, but I mean, I'd want to see at Who, least every week be? somebody being over there to make sure that there's no alarms going off. You know, if there's a way that I'm sorry, if there's a way that I can monitor it, you know, because I am going to be putting an alarm in the building. Mm -hmm. If there's a way that I connect, I can connect it to. I certainly will. Right. So you can get it on your phone. Right. Right. But I can't. I. I don't have that information available today. Yeah, it's only because it's in the APD that yeah, I get if, such if great concerns. Yeah, if I can do that, you know? I will. You know, a gallon of gas being dumped, uh, dumped on the APD is uh, not a good thing. You know? I understand. Mr. Chairman, could I just ask one follow-up question sure. on your question sure. about the tank? Sure. Is it a double hull tank, do you know, or a single hull? Which tank? Single. Storage tank, the 1500 storage tank. <coughs> is it double hull? I believe it is. Does that help? Sounds so kind of like a super, a super tank, it doesn't, a mm. double hull. So it's an internal tank. Double mm. containment type tank. So, okay. so it's double hull. Okay, yes. That's, that helps also. Yeah. <coughs> it's hard to read. It's small. So uh, I'm going to go back to uh, uh, Kyle Lawson's uh, uh, correspondence of this afternoon. And as I'm reading paragraph two, and for everybody at home, I'll, I'll read this uh, email is from Carl Lawson. It's dated today at 3.54 p.m. 
do the offices close here at 4? Is it? 4.30. <laughs> oh, 4.30. The, uh, the condition regarding a listing of the tenants at 211 Mid-Tech Drive, units A through D, was listed on the memo to the Board of Health, uh, dated 919, uh, 9-9-19. Uh, please see attached, but is not listed on the memo to the Zoning Board of Appeals, dated 10-2-19. Uh, petition 4822. That's not true. It is listed. Mm -hmm. But he goes on to say that the condition number eight on the memo to the Board of Health was removed as following the Board of Health meeting of September 16, Bruce Murphy and I, working initially with the building department and later with Spinal Technology, learned the tenant's details. This course of action by the Health <coughs> Department is detailed in the attached Zoning Board of Appeals memo at pay, on page five through six under the heading other site tenants. Hopefully this is helpful. So by my read of that, mm -hmm. even the Board of Health now is satisfied. Condition eight uh, does not need to be there. Okay, and um, it's just, I, I hate endorsing things when we shouldn't be doing that. I understand. The, uh, that's the, really the only correspondence other than uh, there is a detailed, um, Carl Lawson Memorandum, uh, who is just, uh, 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 what a great source of uh, help uh, and, and uh, uh, sophistication to his job duties this man brings to the table. He's always on point. He always does a marvelous job of uh, uh, protecting our town, and particularly the town, the health concerns, and, and as importantly, the APD. And so he, um, does incorporate into his memorandum at page five other site tenants, and he goes on to list what their activities are and the like. Um, and so I'm going to work on the presumption then that he, he, we're all in agreement that eight is not a uh, condition. I do think uh, that any, if we are to favorably consider this petition, that there should be a condition that references the need for both Board of Health uh, compliance uh, with one through seven, and also uh, fire department dissatisfaction of the uh, of the uh, fire uh, containment plans, uh, because they express concern. I just want them to have a final inspection before it's used and, and implemented for its purposes. There is no other correspondence. Does anyone in our audience care to speak in favor of this petition? And if so, would you please come to this microphone? Seeing none, does anyone care to speak in opposition to this petition? Seeing none, we now close it to the public's commentary on the uh, petition and open it up to board discussion and deliberations. Ms. Breda, what are your thoughts? No, I think it's fine. I, all my questions are answered. Um, I, I am, the issue of these types of things being near the water has been an ongoing issue. It started with windmills several years ago, but uh, the process has become very sophisticated since then. Mm -hmm. And I think they've done a good job uh, and beyond, over and above actually. Uh, so I think I mean, they have no problems, Mr. Chairman. Very good, Mr. Martin. Mr. Chairman, this should, should have come up earlier from me, but uh, is, is having a social membership here, is that a co conflict in any way? <laughs> Or do we all have that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's a conflict. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is that called emoluments? I'm not sure. <laughs> Whatever. Um, well, I guess I should take the next step. Is that a should I should I not vote based on that? Oh no! Oh, 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 you're joking. Oh, okay. Just right. joking. <laughs> Yo, I bet we all belong. <laughs> I, 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 who 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 hasn't eaten dinner there and 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 somehow gone to a <clears throat> function or been a member? Okay. That takes care of that. Uh, no, I'm uh, I'm very comfortable with the the presentation and the uh, uh, protections and so forth that have been involved and and uh, uh, subject to the uh, board of health issues and removal of condition eight and so forth. I think we'll be fine. You, you know, Mr. Martin, you're one that uh, very uh, often is our lead voice on uh, mm -hmm. on uh, the uh, landscape and the streetscape. And uh, as you've said on many occasions, now's the time to clean up that property because you're in front of us. So uh, I'm reading this, this uh, site plan, community development and planning is the front yard buffer vegetation should be restored, maintained, 
including addition of three inch caliber buffer trees. So you're only showing two on your submitted plans. Did, did you ultimately come to any understanding with community development about how many buffer trees should be uh, in that, in that, uh, in that uh, front area? Is it one every 20 feet, Dick? Uh, <clears throat> I guess it, it may have changed to one every 30 feet. I'm not sure. It's one every 20 or 30. We have two, um, we have two, entrances, two entrances to the two yeah, curb cuts yeah. on that, so that right. makes things a little bit more. And I understand you're leasing right now, but right. certainly you know, if, if ownership does take place in the future, it would be great to see that right. uh, that comes at least more in conformity. Sure the plan doesn't really show what's like on the sides. There should be, should be trees on the sides, too, and maybe they're there. I don't know. Yep. Right. Our, our plan was to landscape the front, put hybrid bodies around the, the mm -hmm. sides. To, you know, okay. that way when you see our boats in there, you won't see them. Right. So. Good. So if we put a condition to a landscape pursuant to your, pre your, uh, your uh, representations and upon maintain purchase. that landscape. Sort of purchase. Upon purchase. Upon purchase. Oh, upon purchase. You're not going to do it still, as a tenant, huh? We're still about a year or two <laughs> out. <laughs> We don't want to invest in until yeah. it happens. They may okay. not sell it if they do it as a tenant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I guess we can't get away with that one, can we? Oh, no, no. Well, it's funny. We got away with it when uh, yeah. they were putting up a tenant. Uh, they were going to put up a, a, a big flagpole antenna over here. And they, mm -hmm. they fixed the parking lot and never put up the, the flagpole, yeah. if you remember that whole discussion. <laughs> so, it was just <laughs> wonderful. All right. Uh, I'm sorry to butt in. Uh, Mr. Nicanello, what are your thoughts? Um, I believe that they have met all the criteria. And just for a, for a point of clarification on the uh, fuel tanks in some of those boats, uh, the way they're constructed, it's kind of like a double hull system anyways because the tank is a tank, and then you have, if anything leaks out of the tank, it's in the boat. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that we should feel very safe that they're going to do whatever they can to make sure that nothing happens. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Uh, yes, I I still have one additional item that I would like to uh, sure go right ahead. Bring up, and that has to that has to do with uh, on my site visit. Um, I, I I drove around the, the building completely, um, and I noticed that there is an oil stain on the pavement. Someone, I'm not saying your group, but someone uh, apparently had some leaking oil or fuel or something that is, is, a, is a wide track, uh, six to eight inches wide, um, uh, on both sides of the building and into, the, and into Mid, Mid Tech Drive. Uh, again, I'm not saying that it, it's, it's from your activity, uh, uh, et cetera, but uh, if others are using your um, your access, um, it's it's something that should be uh, uh, caref carefully uh, monitored. So that, that kind of spillage in the APD area does not does not occur. Right. We we haven't even got the boats there. Yeah, but I'm, all I'm saying is that this is what I noticed, and 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 I think it's it's worth um, mentioning at this point. Something to watch for the future. Uh, other than that, Mr. Chairman, I I have no further questions. Well, thank you very much. I, I have nothing other than again, I, if we're going to consider a vote, a vote, I would ask the moving party to consider the conditions of Board of Health compliance with. Uh, sections one through seven of the memorandum of Carl Lawson, dated October 2, 2019, page seven, uh, to satisfy the fire department uh, concerns, if any, um, before uh, it becomes operational, and that there be once weekly monitoring at least of the site, meaning somebody's got to go over there and make sure no bells or whistles are going off. Okay. So move, Mr. Chairman. So Mr. Nicanello has moved with those Second. three stated conditions. Mr. Martin has seconded. Does the board care to have any discussion before moving it along to a vote? Were you going to have a, a note on the uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, landscaping up, upon purchase? Was that going to be included? Well, I don't know. I, uh, sure, I guess we can do it upon purchase. Yeah, you know, I, I just you know, if somebody could put a lawn more out there and cut it, you know, keep it's it. Put a lawn, but yes, I understand what you're saying. And if if the monitoring 
can be done electronically off through an offsite. That's absolutely that's fine. fine too. Yeah, I'm only concerned about the tank at least once a week being assured, having exactly. somebody assure that that tank isn't going off. If that can be done remotely, that's absolutely fine. But like you say, you're going to be over there almost every day uh, because right. you have a lot of storage for the uh, restaurant there, right? Correct. <clears throat> All right. So other than that, uh, um, just the variance. Pardon me. Just a removal of the variance. Yeah, well, we have uh, we have to actually take two votes this evening, right? One is for a special permit, and the second for a variance. So let's start with the special permit, and that would be for, uh, a special permit under 202.5, 203.5, and 406, uh, and it deals with the, the use that's going to be done here. On that special permit, uh, we have a motion made by Mr. Nicanello, seconded by Mr. Martin, with three stated conditions. All does the board care to have any more discussion on it before proceeding? Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Carries unanimously. Now let's move to the variance. <coughs> On the variance, um, I think that uh, we can agree that the uh, variance that's required because of its presence in the APD uh, is certainly the criteria is met for that. Um, does anybody have any disagreement with that? That they meet the variance criteria for action for activities to be conducted in the APD. That's fundamentally what that that variance is seeking, right? If it's if if what we're doing is called mechanical, yeah, then that's what the variance would be. No, for. but I mean that's the limitation on the variance. Sure, yeah, okay. So on that uh, uh, variance, I, I would suggest that the same conditions apply to the variance as they do to the special permit. Yep. And is anybody prepared to make a motion on the variance? I move, Mr. Chairman. And second it. <coughs> All right. And on that motion made, does the board care to have any discussion before proceeding to a vote? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 That carries unanimously. Uh, so I'll look forward to seeing draft on both this, on, uh, you know, a draft uh, for both the grant of the variance and the uh, grant of the uh, special permit. Thank you, Mr. Tardiff and company. Good to see you all here. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thanks for your continuing interest in our town. Yes. Spend lots of money over here, will you please? <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I know, Mr. Nicanola. I'm hurrying. No, we do. I want to watch that game too. <laughs> By the way, uh, Arthur Tripolis. Pardon me? Arthur Tripolis. Yes, sir. I know. <laughs> I see him every once in a while. <clears throat> Petition 4823, that of Jay Imid. I hope I'm saying that right. Imid, Imid. Imid. 381 Camp Street, West Yarmouth, Mass. Property located uh, at 1282 uh, Route 28, South Yarmouth, Mass. That property is in the zoning district B2 and also in the HMOD1. The applicant is seeking a special permit under use table 202.5, particularly use H4, to sell used cars at existing gas station parking lot. Good evening. Good evening. Who's going to tell us all about this petition this evening? And who are you? Are you Jay? I'm Jay. <laughs> And who's sitting with you, Jay? Uh, that's Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hello. And how about a last name for you, Barbara? Barbara Hansen. Hansen? H-A-N-S-E-N. -S -S Thank you. <clears throat> all right, why don't you tell us all about your petition? Okay, uh, I'm seeking petition for uh, to sell used cars at uh, that location on uh, 1282 Route 28. It's uh, known <coughs> as a J-Mart. Mm -hmm. Anything for, else? It's for. That's uh, just it, huh? Just that simple. We're seeking uh, ten car license uh, approval. Ten cars. Ten cars. Ten cars. Okay. Uh, currently, we we have a U-Haul in there. We're gonna we're gonna get a U-Haul. It's gonna uh -huh. be just the cars. We rent U-Hauls out of it. You do, huh? <coughs> So no more U-Hauls. No more U-Hauls. U-Hauls going away. It's 
going to go away. Really? Boy, away. they took down that big building up there in Hyannis. <laughs> yep. All those U-Hauls. Where am I going to go for a U-Haul if you don't, you don't have them? I think, no, they keep in Hyannis, I think. Hyannis, they... They did? Yeah. I drove by the other... I must have gone away or not driven next down that road there. in a long time. Suddenly, I went, the U-Haul wasn't there anymore. I said, what the heck happened? No, the trailer before it, it's gone. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Uh, who do we start with last time? Did I pick on you last time, Ms. Britta? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Barron. Any questions of our pe uh, petition? No. Um, and I just want to uh, make note that I received my notification card as as a neighbor. Ah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so you're. You don't have any problem with that, do you? I don't have any problem. You're not a direct, a direct I was, right? I was going to ask whether or not the uh, the U-Haul, um, um, if any, if any of the vehicles, uh, I know that it, that sometimes the uh, vendor of, of the rental for U-Haul sometimes also sells. But you're saying that you're <coughs> you're going to have <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Just new car, new um, used car uh, sales. Correct. And the U-Haul is is off the site. I have no further questions. Mr. Nicanello. Yes, thank you, and good evening, and welcome. Um, so, looking at the parking layout plan, right? Just to help me follow through. Um, looks like all the vehicles are going to be on the right side, the east side of the the station. And the west side of the station is going to be for the other side of the station. I see uh, customers, just customers, and maybe employees. Correct. Yeah. Basically, uh, in the beginning, we, we requested for 15 cars, and then we downsize it to 10 cars, so we right. can have for uh, customers and employees. So that's why. So it's going to be in the left and right of of the building. Right. Possibly, it could be. 15 to 18 cars, employees and customers, along with your used cars? Uh, 10 cars for used, and then one to two employees, that's it. And, the rest and, of and, and your customers. <coughs> and you do no repairs at the station, you're just a filling station. That's all I have right now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Martin? Um. In terms of the used car sales, are we going to have lots of extra signage and signage on the on the autom on the autos and vehicles and ribbons and banners and all that kind of thing? Because uh, basically, <coughs> what we do, we just put the year and then we put uh, how much money we sell it for. Okay. No, no banners. I, uh, I mean, banners usually last two days, and then the wind will blow more. Right, uh, so just trying to keep it as yeah. you know innocuous as possible. <coughs> I know innocuous isn't necessarily the best thing for you guys, but. Um, we like it. Keep it looking as, as, as good as possible. There's quite a few shrubs and trees in the front island there, which is actually on the state property anyways, apparently, <coughs> those that remain. Yes. Okay. And apparently you're adding two others on the, on the on edges there. Okay. Great. Um, <coughs> so we got 14 spaces that are there. Presently, you're looking to have 10 for the used car, so we're leaving only four for the, for the Mart and so forth. Is that the idea? For, yes. That would leave only four for employees and and the J Mart, which seems a little <coughs> uh, less than I might personally like to see. Uh, so, in, o in other words, I'm, I may have some issue with ten cars, uh, and would prefer to see maybe a little bit less. Your handicap space is on the right uh, side of the <coughs> building as well, and that would have to be maintained for uh, for handicap accessibility. So we can't be filling that area up with with the used cars either. Uh, I, uh, beyond what I've just mentioned, I don't, uh, we're making a, f a few a few improvements to the site, which is good. Uh, I think uh, I would just like uh, signage to meet all sign code uh, in terms of how that goes. There wouldn't be any additional signage for used car lot type of thing. And, uh, and then... Uh, Dress up the landscaping wherever you can. If there could be some additional dressing up in the unpaved areas, to the especially to the east of the property there, where there's a fair amount of uh, land, uh, that would be looked at favorably by myself. 
Ms. Britta, any questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, on the application itself, it says existing sign permit is in place. What does that mean? You have a sign in place right now that says used cars for sale? No. What does that mean? Then? <coughs> and what does that sentence mean? Uh, on the building, if I believe, we, we do have a sign we're not been using, so we can use it as a uh, used car. So you sign on the on, on, the, on, on, the, mark on the building itself, itself right now that yeah. says used cars? No, it doesn't say anything now. Well, it says what? Yeah, yeah, there is a <clears throat> there is a um, a sign, but it doesn't have anything on it, and okay. there's a sign permit okay. in place for that sign. So we can. And you have a free. We're not asking for any relief about <coughs> signs tonight, anyway, right? right. No. no. So yeah. could you just go over again what you anticipate putting in the cars themselves? The uh, used car. Uh, a sign in the wind in in each individual windshield. No, 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 no. Above, above. Uh, you mean on the cars? Yes. Uh, will be uh, the year or uh, year of the vehicle, and then the amount. Let's say five. Like in the 5, in the windshield. 000. You yeah. put that in, in the front. Yeah. Two thousand five. Two thousand five for three thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> Hold that truck for me, will you? Because right, I the the mobile station on Route Twenty Eight in the corner they have used which I of course think visually does not look great. Um, they have lots of signs in the windows of those cars, so it really looks looks like a used car lot yeah. and it, on the main street, which I think is kind of tacky. But that's just my personal opinion. On the west side of the lot as you go toward the residential dwellings. Um, there's, I went to the site today actually in the pouring rain and actually walked around it. Um, they have no buffer at all, any of those houses looking into that site. Um, is there any contemplation of trying to make that visually better so they don't have to look into a used car lot? Uh, I particularly, own those particularly I own this, cars. Particularly so. the, the people in through here. Uh, they are looking into a parking lot, and now it's going to be a parking lot with cars that say $2,015, $5,000. They're not going to see them because it's going to be facing the other way. They're going to be looking at cars, so there's no, there's no buffer here at all. Is there any way you could, you could picking um, up on Mr. Martin's comments about making the site look a little bit better so that it does not hedge. look... Hedge or I mean, some, I, I don't some, see... Some bushes or... Between them? Yeah, I mean, like where, maybe where the sign is. You know, that old sign there. Uh, it looks like there's only about a foot of land on that yeah, side of the yeah, property yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, whatever you suggest to put there, I'm, I'm, I'm up to it. Well, I don't want to make suggestions. I'm asking you for your suggestions. If I were a resident, I would not be happy with a used car lot being authorized, you know, 150 feet from my house. <laughs> so you own that site, you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's my only comment. I think yeah. I, I, I personally yeah. don't think it's a good idea. I think having used cars in Route 28, not a good idea. We're trying to upgrade 28. We're trying to make it look better. You've got a fairly decent residential neighborhood in back of you. I don't think it's a great idea, but that's my own personal opinion. Um, and if we are go if I'm going to be convinced that this is a good idea, I would like to see a lot of improvement on that site so the neighbors don't have to be looking at a used car lot because that's what they're going to be looking at. What I mean, about a stockade fence, an, a, 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 an attractive sort of fence that, from but, I mean, the that buffer? That would to the residents. I would, I would have, have the residents spoken to you about these plans? Have they may be here to speak to us tonight. I don't know. Right, but I'm asking him, have, did you go to the residents and, and say this was... You, what, you, no, you, you rent those houses, apparently. Yeah, so they are, they're rented. Yeah, I mean, I, had, I have now U-Hauls and then a lot bigger than the cars, and then the they never said anything yeah. about it. But did, did you go to them and tell them you were going to ask for permission to sell used cars there? Uh, no, I know. You I, didn't? I, I okay. Didn't. I mean, I don't think they're going to reject this. It's better than having a U-Haul in there, haven't they? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's like it's being called the thinnest kid at fat camp. I mean, it's not a great... It's not a great look, quite frankly, for Route 28 that we are trying to upgrade and with the wastewater you know, project taking place and we're going to be putting waste, all that property along 28 is going to be very valuable and we're hoping for um, 
you know, really upscale development. I just don't think a used car lot or selling used cars on Route 28 is a great idea, um, especially when it's visually unattractive from almost every angle. But those are my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I, do you sell uh, anything inside the building? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a little convenience, convenience store. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, how many, uh, are most people buying something in the convenience store, coming to the pumps, getting gas, and then going in and buying cigarettes? Is that what happens sort of in the usual course of your yeah. business? And you park the U-Hauls to the east as we're looking at, to, to the right, if we're looking at it from yeah, 28. To the right and left, both, both, both sides. And what have those vehicles consisted of, vans and? A van and uh, big trucks. Too. Oh, big trucks too? Big box trucks. Big box, box trucks. Truck, yeah. How many of those could you get on the site? Uh, like, I'd like 13 in there sometime. 10, what? 10, 13, sometime I have. Both sides. Both wow. sides, yeah. Wow, you really pack those in, huh? Okay, so, you know, I, I think that there is, uh, I, I don't care about uh, buffers as, as uh, much as I uh, would want to care about it because the site just doesn't lend itself to it. We have an existing structure, we have 14 uh, parking spots, and they have been utilized for motor vehicle uh, storage all along. That's the nature of a gas station, though it's not a service station. And um, I, quite frankly, I'd rather, you know, personally rather look at a uh, passenger vehicle, even if it did have two thousand five, three thousand dollars on the windshield, as opposed as opposed to uh, thirteen box trucks, you know. But um, I am really listening very closely to what Ms. Britta has to say, and and I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, Mr. Martin's probably accurate when he when he opines that that's about a foot that runs uh, behind the parking spots on the west side. You see what I'm talking about, that yes, narrow yes, strip? Yes. So why can't we have you put up white stockade fencing? Yeah, no problem. You know, vinyl fencing along that, 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 that whole uh, line from, assuming the town will permit it, even into the planting, although I understand you're gonna taper that down likely, but I'd at least wanna see it from the planter to the back. Uh, not to the back bound. On the rear, nothing on the rear is going to change from its existing. And I, I don't know how we could uh, ask you to do anything different there. As is true on the, on the, uh, side. On the uh, east side, uh, particularly since I, I don't know what X structure means. What does that mean? What is that structure that's to the east? What is that? You that's know? the professional existing, condominium. Existing structure. Oh, EX, I'm, I'm sorry. It's fine. <laughs> you know, my glasses on, and I'm looking at it, and I almost thought there was a hyphen there. Existing okay. structure. X structure, I was going to say. I think that's the house I gave away in my divorce. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. So, Rick condominium, too. You know, in my mind, I think we need to do what we can to improve. I, I absolutely agree. I hate to see used cars at uh, places along 28, but guess what? There are three of them now you know, uh, and, and uh, existing, and one of them is yours, and uh, the two others, uh, uh, we know uh, one's almost across the street from you, diagonally sort of, isn't it? They, now they're selling boats in there, but historically they've sold automobiles, and then we have another one, as uh, Ms. Britta points out, down at the mobile station. It's, it's part of being in a town with a very limited B1, B2 zoning district. I mean, it's just some place these things need to go in life. <laughs> And uh, I, I just, like Ms. Britta, though, wish we could just, you know, tear down a lot of things along Route 28 and start all over again, but we unfortunately can't. So I'm very concerned, though, that this, uh, that this uh, what I see as a ramp, am I right, that that's sort of a, a handicap ramp? Yeah. And that that handicap spot now not be relocated to some other location on this property, uh, and that that's the 10th. Uh, used car spot. Well, I'm, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, eight. Fourteen. Eight on that side, yep. right? And two over on this side. I'm, uh, where, where are the cars exactly going to go? Any of them going to be to the west side? There's n nine, nine on the right, including the handicap, and five on the left. Six, seven, eight. No, counting the handicap. That's yep. what I'm saying. Yeah. So eight, eight cars for sale are like are going to be located on the on the east side. 
Could be, yeah. And two yep. are going to be located on the west side. Is that your intention? And you're going to leave two spots for uh, personnel. Three. Where does a customer park that doesn't want gas? You've got a convenience store. I mean, they can park, I mean, we can put, I mean, we said 10 or, mm -hmm. or 8, 10. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be 5 on uh, on the east side mm -hmm. and 5 on on the west side. We did, we did. And then we, we, we have the three the here, look at it, handicap. Yep, okay. Okay. And then You've got 14 four. spots there, right? right? You've got 14 spots. In total. Well, what, uh, 10 of them are going to be taken up by used cars. Mm -hmm. Two of them, one has to remain open because uh, unless it's being utilized by somebody that's uh, handicapped, right? Correct. Because that's what that space is required to be and must be. Yeah. And so that leaves two extra spots. Uh, am I right? Let's count this now. I'm just trying to make sure I understand. Ten cars, one handicapped, that's 11. That leaves us three spaces, right? So you're going to have two spaces, and, and, and is it your testimony? Is, what you're telling me is you, you, you never have people that come in there but for one at a time that aren't buying gas but are buying? They do. They do. We have them right, right next to the handicap. There's three spots in here. They can park there. Where? Where? Those are going to be taken up by used cars, aren't they? Well, the used cars going to be. There's gonna a be handicap space and two, two, two other spots there on the, so on the east side. I see them there, and but there five, was only. Five is going to be taken from. From the uh, east side, it's kind of leaving one one open, and then five cars gonna be on the west side. It's gonna be taken by used cars. So we have one, two, three, and then one uh, handicap. No, you have 14 total. So there's six. Right. This one, is two, this three. isn't really heavy lifting yes. for either one of us. So that's a spot. You have 14 total. Okay. Ten are gonna be taken up by used cars. So we have four what, left. What? You have three left because the handicap has to remain open, right? Mm -hmm. Handicap must remain open. So now you've got two that are being taken up by, by staff. That leaves us one for a convenient, uh, for a party that's coming in to buy something in your convenience store that isn't handicapped. Can we agree on that? Or am I, am I somehow missing something? Mm -hmm. So if that's true, is it true that you usually uh, get, do you get more than one person coming in just to buy goods in the convenience store on any regular basis? Or is it usually in connection with the purchase of gas? I, I don't know, it's your station. Park, they got gas, they go inside, or they park on the side. Sometimes they, they get gas, they go inside. Yeah, but we can't count the gas. We can't count the, ga the, 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 the four spots under the gas, by the gas pumps. We just can't do it because they're not, you, parking, spot. they're not parking spots. So at some point then we have one customer parking spot, right? Unless the person is handicapped, then we have two. Yeah, I think 10 cars is a heavy load here, to be honest with you. Mr. Chairman, I had one other question, um, sure. if I could. Uh, the existing U-Haul business, did that require special permit at any time, or? No. It doesn't require the rental of, no. of trucks? I, I think 10 is a lot. I'd have to look that up in the bylaw, but I, I don't think so. Yeah, you know, I think 10 is a lot, but I got to tell you, it's, it's, it, it's really, I guess, it, if it's nine cars and three uh, available for patrons, uh, you know, including the handicap, what difference does it really make? If people can't find parking, they're not coming into your convenience store, right? Mr. Chairman, could I ask one other question? Also? Sure. Where is the dumpster? Dumpster, it's in, uh, Where is that going to be located? And the, what's the existing trailer on back of the building? That's a storage trailer. That's a storage trailer. Okay, where is the dumpster? Uh, it's uh, facing uh, the edge of the pavement. It says right there on, uh, on the, the east side. To the right of the trailer, the, right. the storage trailer. To the right. Oh, where it says edge of pavement. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's right there. So you have the dumpster there? Yeah. It's not a lot of room. So he drives down the aisle and picks up the dumpster, and that's how he. What aisle? Well, well the between aisle between the spaces. The spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, that way. All right. Right. Because yeah. mm -hmm. that—that's not supposed to be visible from the street either. How would they? How would they pick the, pick up the dumpster or empty the dumpster and 
and then you move off the site. Do they go in, pull pick in, it up, and, then, and, and it then go up. around the other way? Oh, they back in towards oh, them. Back in? Because I, yeah. I, I, I hear that <coughs> I hear that dumpster at, at five o'clock every morning. But as I said, I'm I'm only two. You don't need an alarm clock. On, only two lots. Only two lots away. Um, but you may you may hear some car alarms in the future. <laughs> well, I think I think personally that you've always kept that site looking pretty good, at least during my tenure here in the town of Yarmouth. And, and I do, however, think that we need, a, uh, we need uh, some kind of uh, blockage. And the simplest blockage to me would be white vi a nice white vinyl fence running along there that you could, yeah, no you know, we wouldn't have to worry about falling over in the rain and that sort of thing. You could go out and power wash to keep it clean. And Mr. Chairman, what would you think about that, Ms. Britter? Would that help your concern? No, but <laughs> I, I appreciate your effort. Mm -hmm. I do. I'm not sure the fence is any better than, you know, although a white vinyl fence is better than a stockade fence. But yeah, um, may I ask a question, Mr. Sure. Chairman? Oh, I'm would, sorry. would it be okay if we have a uh, a term for a one-year review and uh, see it goes for a year and come back and make sure everything's okay? Would that be all right? That's fine. Okay. Does anyone in our audience care to speak in favor of this petition? I already asked that. No, you didn't. Okay. Please come to the microphone, Beard. Seeing none, anyone care to speak in opposition to the petition? Seeing none, we now close it to the public commentary on the petition. We open it up to board discussion and deliberation. Remind me. Ms. Breder, do you go first now? <laughs> the ends. It's the ends that are always the trouble. <laughs> Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, my questions have been answered, so. Okay. And Mr. Uh, Martin. Um, <clears throat> I just started to bring up, it, it does appear that you would have required Board of Appeals approval for the for the rental of the U-Hauls as well. Is that one reason we're ma making this change? Is that, Did that become a problem for you? Did, was, were you ever cited for that? No. Okay, because no, <clears throat> no, 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 no. our use schedule does require Board of Appeals approval for that as well. If it's going away, it's just really a moot mo point. But uh, my my concern is what you're hearing here. I uh, there there are other situations up on Station Ave on 28 where used cars have been allowed to be sell, uh, sold at uh, at service stations. Uh, so the precedent has been has been made to some extent. I, I think that number the number 10 is is way too many for the site based on the limitations of size and parking spaces. Um, I could see. Uh, allowing it uh, subject to the addition of the fence that was mentioned, uh, that the landscaping be cleaned up and added to wherever wherever possible, uh, and it'd be limited to uh, no more than seven cars. Is my seven cars? That's my feeling. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Uh, Nicanella. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no, I would uh, also agree for seven, and uh, as I stated, a uh, a revisit in one year. Uh, I think seven. I think seven is a little um, stringent. Um, I, I would. I would argue in favor of a of a one year uh, review, uh, but at the uh, 10, 10 vehicle limit. Um, I, I think it. I think going to seven is uh, unnecessarily restraining the the um, uh, the proponent. Well, um, I got to tell you, I uh, think any used car station on Route 28 is, is something I don't like, but I think we have to allow uh, under the current zoning. Uh, at least um, I don't see how this is going to cause any undue hazard, nuisance, nor congestion. Uh, when you figure that there have been 13 U-Haul trucks that park there and potentially 13 U-Haul trucks coming out of there on a Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. So uh, this isn't going to increase, park cars aren't going to increase traffic ca nor cause nuisance or hazard. I, I do believe that uh, fencing along at least, uh, to me I would balance fencing out on both ends, but uh, I think in terms of the fairness to your neighbors that fencing at least on that westerly side is a must. Um, on the number of cars, um, 
again, I, I think 10 is an awful lot for that spot, too. I really do. Uh, but I'm willing to go along with what everybody else says, so I'm not going to be a tie maker or a tie breaker here. Um, I've heard two people say seven. Uh, you've asked for 10. That's a deviation from what you've sought. Uh, assuming for a moment that the motion is made that only seven spots be allowed and that that were to carry, uh, is that something that you would still want to go forward with? Uh, how about nine? <laughs> I was just going to say eight. <laughs> now let's compromise it at eight. How's that? You know, I mean, to me, eight cars, once you sell one, you're just going to go bring another one down from the, from the auction, right? And yep. you're going to put it out there with another thing. So, so maybe you have, maybe we're helping you by not having too many cars on the lot for people to think about. Because, you know, the people that are going to buy those cars are actually going to come in in a car usually. They're not going to walk down 28 to get there. And they're going to want to take a minute to stroll up and down, so two more spaces would be very helpful there, Absolutely. you know? So I think eight. Uh, it, would you consider, what do you think about that, um, Mr. Barron? Compromise, and, sir. And I know, Ms. I know Ms. Britta to my left wants zero, so just be aware of that, okay? So is anybody prepared to make a motion? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that uh, uh, petition 4823, uh, the applicant is uh, seeking special permit uh, to sell used cars in existing parking lot uh, with the modification to the original number to eight and a, a year review, I would uh, make a motion of, of that. And uh, is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Mr. Martin seconds the motion made by Mr. Nicanello that there be uh, a limitation of eight cars uh, granted uh, under the special permit, not ten. Can you and add that the fencing as well? And Right. Yep, one year review and then the uh, fencing along the north, uh, the uh, westerly west side. side, okay? East of, easterly side, I thought. No, westerly east. side. Westerly side? Yeah. All right, my error. I mean, honestly, uh, again, I suggest to you that it would make sense to put it on both sides just to balance the property, but it's your money that you're spending there, so. Uh, I do think cleaning up the landscape beds out there ought to be put in here as well. The, that, that's the, along with the two, two trees added as per the plan. Right. Yeah. The what? And that's including the two trees added as per the plan. Right. All right, so the, the now is a one-year review, a car limitation, fencing along westerly side, two trees to be added as per plan and beds to general, uh, uh, you know, buffer beds there to be generally cleaned up, okay? And maintained. So uh, are those additions to the motion first and then the second, are those okay? Yep. With the moving parties and the seconding parties? Yep. All right, and now does the board care to have any discussion on this motion before proceeding? All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. So that vote is four to one. That means that it does pass. Uh, a decision will be drafted. It will be filed with the town clerk's office. 20 days must elapse before that condition, uh, that uh, petition is considered uh, uh, valid and deemed uh, ready for recordation at the Bonsville Registry of Deeds. You're going to need to take that special permit down there, record it, return proof of recordation back to our board secretary, okay? Uh, she'll give you instructions, of course, as we go through this. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. to Thank see you. you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, petition uh, 4824, John E. Granger, 1 Copley Place, South Yarmouth, Mass. Uh, the property is located in the zoning district R40. And this evening, our applicant seeks a variance from zoning bylaw 401.1 to occupy camper on property. Would the petitioner come forward, please? Hello, sir. I assume you're Mr. Granger, are you? Yes, sir. Hello, John. Hello. Why don't you go ahead and tell us all about what your petition is about. I'm a retired veteran from the Air Force, 23 years. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I'm 100% disabled and I'm unable to climb the stairs to get to my master bedroom in the house on one Copley Place. 
I reside down south where it's warmer, <laughs> so my back doesn't feel so bad. But I do come home and spend time here, and I sleep in the camper um, because of the climb to the stairs. Um, I, I have read uh, the the people that have petitioned not to let me do this, and I'd like to make a couple corrections to the letters. Sure, you feel free to address anything you want. I've owned the property for nine years. When I moved into the property, the health department was visiting that property about once every other week because of the deplorable conditions of the house. I bought it at a fixed rough price. At that time, I was able to do the carpentry work and uh, landscaping and all myself. I spent over $70,000 improving that property in the last eight years. I spent the last three months on my hands and knees because I'm unable to stand and shovel, and literally on my hands and knees and have cleaned up the whole side of the garage that's mentioned in one of the letters. <clears throat> I've taken 70 trees off this property. I've done curb peel with several gardens. And in, in one of the letters, it says that um, the gardens have been overgrown, and they have. I had to be down south for medical reasons, and I didn't come home last summer. So my son, which if all you have a son that doesn't like to mow lawns and take air gardens, let, let those lapse. That's been corrected. Um, he does live in our house. We do use the inside facilities. We strictly use a camping trailer, well, the trailer for sleeping. And uh, I sit outside the camper. I, I think I've seen a couple of board members come, come by the house and look at the property. And I, I've established a... a uh, campfire site I use for medical reasons believe it or not because I have PTSD and that helps campfires help me I'm not asking for any pity I don't expect that um, in one of the letters it says the fence in the front of the yard is dilapidated and to be honest with you it's a I have white posts this high skirting the edge of the road and two of them were knocked down this winter by snowplows. I have not replaced those. I did last year. The fence in the backyard was blown down during the blizzard this past winter. Those have been replaced. I replaced those as soon as I got there. Two-thirds of the roof has been replaced. The other third will be replaced next spring. I'm on a limited budget, and I've been improving it as I go. A lot of people don't understand why I'm in the camper. And I've explained that shortly. I just can't, I can't climb the stairs. So I only have one other choice, which I don't like. And that's to leave my house in the army. Because I'll never be able to afford another house. My house improved since I bought it from $160,000 to $280,000. So to say that I'm not taking care of the property is very, very misleading. I put, uh, they said the septic won't handle it. I put a brand new septic in when I bought the house. I have a two bedroom and I was gonna tell them I'm expanding it to a three bedroom. I installed a 1500 gallon new septic tank that was a cesspool and all my lateral lines and all are in compliance with a three-bedroom house. It, it's not easy, as probably a lot of you know, to fix up a house on a retirement plan, but I've, I've done that. I've put $70,000 into this house. I love where we live. I know that the lawn got a little out of hand last year. That's been resolved, like I said. And I've had numerous, numerous um, people that have walked by the house in the last nine years and 
stopped and actually commented for me way down the road or right around the corner, commented on the progress that we've made. Little did they know how I had to do it. I'm asking for a petition from June to September, just after the Labor Day, until I get the VA to approve me a renovation, which they've denied once already, to move my bedroom downstairs somehow, but it's gonna take an addition, which I don't have the money and the VA won't approve. They'll only approve $8,000 for handicap accessibility in my bathroom. I'm asking them, the board to allow me to sleep in my camper for those three months so I can visit family uh, during the summer months, enjoy Yarmouth as we do. I've lived here 15 years, nine years in one Copley, and my wife is a, I'm a wash ashore, <laughs> she's a native. And uh, we have strong holdings with a loose, Moose Yarmouth Lodge. Um, we've supported all the youth teams, everything. I hate to see the fact that I'd have to put a for sale sign in this house tomorrow morning. So I'm asking that you allow me to sleep in that trailer. I, I wanna thank the Board of Appeals office and the building department for taking this to a concern level that I appreciate. They've done a wonderful job. Um, she does do a good job, doesn't she? <laughs> she does, does as does Tim. By she, I'm referring to Ms. Sandra Clark, yes, who's absolutely. sitting Sandy Clark, rather, she sitting me, to my left. She helped me with the paperwork, and uh, normally you just don't get that. Yeah. But here in Yarmouth, we do. Well, that's what makes it a special town. And everywhere else, and I, I, we love our town, <clears throat> and we surely don't want to to leave it but all right I think we got the idea of what you're looking answer. for here how, how about uh, you mr. Barron any questions of our petitioner yeah, public first, mr. Huh? Public mr. Barron do you have any yes. questions about <laughs> yes. petitioner you. yes um, you said that you uh, intend to have um, another uh, a third bedroom uh, and you're hoping to have that um, somehow attached to the to the existing building or I'm trying or, to get the um, present laundry room changed over to a master bedroom I'll still have the of course the washer and dryer in that bedroom but we have the room and that's on the first floor level with the bathroom are there any bedrooms on the on the first floor now there is a small room that they consider a bedroom it's eight foot by nine foot and I can't see myself getting a bed in that room, although they do consider it. When, when you say they, who, who, who is they? Me and my wife, I mean, okay. if you look at uh, eight right. foot by nine foot. In other words, it hasn't been specified by, no, no, sir. by anyone from the town. Um, so the existing bedrooms are upstairs? Yes, sir. The one downstairs is considered a bedroom. We use it as a computer room. And the upstairs is considered the master bedroom. And it's 22 steps upstairs. But there 22 is, steps? But, but there is a bedroom downstairs Perfect. now. Yes. Why is that not p possible for you to use? Again, it's eight foot by nine foot, and you can't get a bed in that room because of the location of the door. So the the the, the only other the only other occupancy of the of the first floor is is a living room and and a, and a kitchen. I would assume. Correct. Correct. That is correct. It's a hundred year old house. <laughs> I think it would have been helpful if we had had a floor plan of the of the building, so as to to, to make um, a rational uh, choice here as to how to proceed. Um,
I reserve any, any further questions. Thank you, I Mr. Nicanello. I may have others. I am also at the moment. Thank you, sir. You know, Mr. Granger, I'm going to speak out of, uh, out of turn. Just uh, I usually wait to be the last one to give everybody else a chance to say their mind. But I'm going to tell you that you are uh, certainly very, I'm very sympathetic to your concerns. And as I was when my uh, mother had a stroke and we had to move her from the second floor down to the living room and put her bed there for four years. And uh, to anybody that suffers a disability, uh, my uh, heart goes out to them, particularly if it's service related and you uh, uh, deserve all the applause uh, uh, from every member of this uh, room that uh, you could possibly be offered for your service to this country, and we thank you. I have a real problem, though. I've been extremely consistent while being on this board that I cannot uh, in any way consider a camper as a suitable living accommodation uh, for people uh, on in a residential neighborhood or any neighborhood other than where camping is allowed. Uh, we have been confronted with this in the past. We have uh, given some leniency uh, for only but a short period of time and for a specific issue. Uh, if, if, for example, you told me you needed to live in that uh, for the next couple of months while uh, a modification or a model was going on in your home, I could see uh, considering that on a uh, very limited basis, not by granting a special permit, but by extending it out for hearing so that you weren't continuing to get violation notices for a couple of months. Uh, the VA program, I know they're being very active down here in helping a lot of people to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, make modifications to their home because of disabilities. I'm sorry your request hasn't gone as quickly as you would have liked. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to support this petition, not because I don't have empathy and sympathy for you, but because I can't. Not if I'm going to be fair and consistent with what I've ruled in the past, okay? Mr. Martin. Yeah, I'm also sympathetic to the, <clears throat> your situation, and it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but uh, unfortunately those things also happen where people do have to make different living arrangements uh, if their house doesn't suit their purposes or their handicaps or whatever, that that selling and getting an apartment or condominium or a small ranch uh, with bedrooms on the first floor might be there, might be the answer here. Um, I don't know if you've looked at a stale lift or something like that, whether that's a possibility. Uh, but I just, uh, as it looks right now, it's completely out of out of, out of uh, character with the neighborhood. Uh, it doesn't meet any uh, any zoning bylaws. It doesn't meet the uh, requirements that we would need to look at to provide relief under uh, for a variance uh, uh, within this this committee. So, uh, uh, as much as and while I would agree, you know, if we, it was a period of time, you needed a couple months to stay there until such time as you go south or whatever the case may be, uh, but that it disappear over the winter. I think that that's. Uh, the way I would be happy, having to be look at this because it's uh, it's not uh, not fair to the the neighborhood, the neighbors, and uh, uh, and how it looks is uh, even though you have made improvements and uh, certainly that's appreciated. I live in that neighborhood, I know it. Um, yeah, but there are some there's quite a bit of clutter in the yard as well, and it just does not show well in general. And the, having the camper there just does not. It, it requires a relief that we're really not able to give. So uh, I could go on, but I think I've said it up. Okay, Ms. Breda. Um, just a couple of clarifications. On the sheet that we have in our package, um, it identifies the house as a three-bedroom house. Is, is that not accurate? Are you saying it's only two? That's correct. Because it says three. Am no, I right? they're considering that little bedroom on the first floor. But he's considering Let me, let me explain. I, I have the answer to that. Up in the master bedroom, when you get to the top of the stairs, from the top of the stairs to a wall is about seven and a half feet. We have our closets there. Then there's a wall that goes into the bathroom bedroom. They consider the second floor two bedrooms. That's impossible because well, the stairway goes right into yeah, well, the middle. Someone the in the real estate industry considered it a three-bedroom house. Did, when you bought it, did you buy it as a three-bedroom house? Did yes, you expect it to be a three-bedroom house? Yes, ma'am. Then, um, I'm sort of my comments are in line with the rest of the of the, the rest of the. the no, it is what it is. 
the board. Um, <clears throat> one thing Mr. Martin mentioned, did you consider a stairmaster to take you upstairs the to the The stairs meeting? are not regular width. Right. They're only 26 inches <laughs> wide, which would eliminate putting a stair okay. lift in. Is there any other space on the lot that you could move the camera? <clears throat> I, I know that, but where would you, if you could, where I'd would have you? have to take the fence down that I put up to improve the property and park it in the backyard. I'm not sure. In Am any I? event, you can't live in it. So, that, but anyway, I was just, I'm just. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to. Sure. Now you have a picture of the house there. Yeah. Uh, a small That's block from room. ten years ago. Yeah. Look, I, look at. I, I just. I'm going to kind of try to get this on a track that we need to be on. Uh, I'd like to try to poll the vo board if we could, mm -hmm. so that I can give you an option here. Um, Ms. Britta, it, it, based on what you've heard so far, would it be your intention to support this petition? No. And Mr. Martin? No. Uh, Mr. DeYoung says no. Mr. Nicanello? I can't, Mrs. Chairman. And Mr. Barron? No. I, I, I know that there are parties that have come here that have been in interest, but it's not going to be supported, okay? Which means that, uh, you know, relative to this same sort of relief, you'd be barred for two years. I, is there some way that we could, uh, do you have a limited opportunity where you could, you could uh, continue to stay there uh, with uh, a true expectation that there'd be a remodel in this area instead of worrying about the roof, perhaps put the money towards a, a remodel of that downstairs you were talking about? Um, well, one thing I've, Ask for relief until I leave in the in the fall. Well, in the win winter time, we we're supposed to leave this Wednesday. My wife just got diagnosed with cancer. I'm so sorry, sir. Be here till mid-November at least. Okay. Well, I don't think we'd have any problem uh, not taking action on this tonight, deferring action uh, to a me meeting in the first part of December, and that uh, would eliminate the you know the fines that are being opposed upon you to uh, allow you and your family to be accommodated in that. But um, the the problem is multifold. I understand. What yeah, I, I so wish we could do what you're asking, but we can't. It's it's a slope that even under the circumstances of yours, the equitable uh, sort of argument you make, special and unique to you, uh, is just a slope that we can't do in residential areas of this town. We're not going to start it tonight. So you have uh, two choices. Uh, I guess we can either take a vote and deny it tonight, and that would then cause the... Uh, the penalties to be imposed uh, and or we could defer the vote uh, but with a full understanding that th this same board would be meeting uh, at the some meeting in December would you all be available for that well, you don't I'll, know I'll yet be right? by then. well I, I understand I, I understand you might well be gone but we would need to vote on it, take action on it we could only continue it with your approval otherwise we need okay. to take action tonight yes and if we take action tonight, then you're going to start running a violation fines. Yeah. Can we take action, essentially denying it, but allowing him this uh, period a grace of time? period. A grace period. Yeah. I mean, I guess we could do that, but. I'd be happy with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we could do it that way, Dick. We've done it the other way mostly before, but I mean, I guess if we're definitive that we're, we're, we're denying the relief but not imposing any uh, penalty until uh, asking the building commission not to impose any penalty till the 1st of December? That's fine. Now, I see people here, and I know some of these people here are here for this very reason tonight, and, and I see that heads are shaking, and that, but I want to point out that I, my suspicion is is that much like the three letters I have in here that I'm, I'm not going to bother to read into the record, that the people that are here tonight uh, in interest in this petition are here to voice their displeasure with the requested relief. Is that fair to say? Does anybody here want to speak in favor of the petition? All right. So uh, you've heard what the board is going to do, which is to deny the petition but give a grace period here before the implementation of additional sanctions through to the end of November, uh, December 1, uh, at which point you have to become compliant. And that includes that, just so you know, that the parking of that uh, uh, camper on the side of the building, it's got to be screened. 
by the by the uh, dwelling. Okay. No, that's not what the building department told me. Well, I think that's what he says right in his. Uh, it needs to be behind. The zoning, the zoning requirement is it has to be in back of this structure. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Screened, yeah. By, screened by the, by the structure. The house. Right, screened yeah. by the house. It says I have to be back of the, uh, uh, behind the front line, front property line of the building. Okay, well, we got took pictures and he said you're well in compliance. Okay. You're 12 foot behind the front of the garage, uh -huh. which puts me in compliance. He said that the, don't take this to mean that I'm saying you can live there, but it can be parked there. I've okay. gone all through Yarmouth, okay. and there are campers parked everywhere, <laughs> plugged in beside their, and if you go online, and I encourage you to please to do this, there's an online site that allows you to rent a camper in Yarmouth for $100 a night on a property, this is true, on a oh. property. That's not what I'm asking for. Was asking for. I, I'm I'm good with what we what you've decided. All right. It is yep. what it is. And, and and you know, and the building department will t really they're the enforcement agent, so they'll tell you whether or not uh, uh, you uh, where it's parked. If you if they feel you're in compliance, that's all I care about. Okay. Right. I, I'm I'm reading the the notice though, and and they seem to suggest that it can't be. Uh, it, it does need to be. Uh, it's a lot too. So I don't know how that comes into. Stood to the rear of the front uh, front. Of of the building line of the lot, Correct. except for loading and unloading. The problem here is that he has two fronts. That's, you know, that's the unfortunate well, what, part. What happened was the violation was given to me while I had been looking at the property. By what? No one went to look at the property. Oh, yeah. They just issued the violation because someone complained. Okay. And when Tim came out, he said, this is okay. Your Totally okay, except for except for sleeping in the camper. Well, so, that being said, well, I for one wish you the very best, but we do need to take some actual action on this. And before we close it off to uh, the the vote, having knowing exactly uh, how this board is going to vote, because that's why I polled that everybody's going to be a no petition. Is there anybody that does feel some compelling need to speak? Good. So now we're going to close it to the public discussion and uh, uh, deliberation, uh, begin deliberations on it. Is anybody prepared to make a motion relative to the grant or denial of this uh, petition by Mr. Granger, keeping in mind that if we're going to deny it, uh, that we uh, have all kind of expressed some sympathy and willingness to, I think, all of us uh, would be willing to go out to a, a December 1. Would that be fair to say, Mr. Barron? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Barron, Mr. Martin, Ms. Ms. Breda? Yes, that's fine. Okay. So that the denial would be uh, with an understanding that enforcement would not occur before December 1. Is, is, is that fair to say for motion? Is somebody prepared so to make moved. a motion? Mr. Martin has moved. Second? Second on the motion? Second. Second. Who did? Ms. Breda did. I think I heard her first. Okay. And that is to. Uh, uh, deny the motion, that, am I correct? Deny the motion, but uh, hold off enforcement until December 1. Deny. On that motion, to, I'm assuming nobody needs discussion. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to deny the petition, but uh, hold off enforcement until December 1, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. Uh, I wish you the best, sir. I hope that you can get that VA loan and they can do it over the winter for you. Yep. Pardon me? Until uh, 12. 19. Yeah. Some nights were heroes and some nights. All right, well, we still, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we still have other business. Okay, so if you'd allow us to get to our other business, we'd appreciate it. Okay? The next up is that of Town of Yarmouth. Next up is that of Town of Yarmouth, uh, and it's concerning property located, uh, town property located at 507 Buck Island Road. Our petitioner is seeking, uh, oh, by the way, that's in a residential 25 zoning district. Yeah. Our applicant is seeking a special permit under 104.3.2, uh, subparagraph number four, to expand a pre-existing non-conforming use, and or a special permit under use table 202.5, uh, use table P10, a uh, use for new 
expanded Department of Works uh, facility and or variances from zoning by law <laughs> for parking location buffer requirements in, in, in lot trees. One day I'm really hoping someone will come in and, and actually tell us what they think the relief they need is <laughs> instead of giving us 14 different options to choose from on the menu. <coughs> Well, good evening. Good um, evening. Who are you, sir? My, my name is Jeff Colby, the director of you, Public Jeff? Works, and I uh, appreciate this opportunity to meet before you. I don't know that I've done this before. I've met before many of the boards. Oh, we're just town, happy here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to make this uh, quick, and then I know there's uh, who else is with us, Jeff? Uh, we also have Jeff Alberti and Tony Westbizer from Weston and Sampson here as well. Uh, there are designers of the building, and. Well, good evening to both of you. Where'd you come from? Uh, we're from Weston and Sampson up in Foxborough, Massachusetts. So you'd rather be in Foxborough watching a bit football game tonight, right? Correct. <coughs> well, we will speak your, fast. Keep your votes, I mean, your comments brief, <laughs> so we all can go watch it. Go ahead, gentlemen, tell us what you got. Absolutely. Well, I'd just like to make a couple of uh, introductory comments, and that is, if you're familiar with the site, as I'm sure you all are, the uh, buildings are past their useful life. In fact, we had to relocate uh, the police maintenance component uh, to a safer location. There's just some worker safety issues with some of the buildings out there. Yeah. The location generally of the site uh, works for us. We're just looking to replace some of the older structures, which the uh, gentleman from Weston and Sampson will cover in a little more detail for you. Uh, just to give a little bit of a background, uh, funding for the design and the owner's project manager for this project uh, was approved at the town meeting in 2018. And construction funding is going to be requested in October 29th town meeting. And the ballot that follows will be important for the bonding or borrowing of the project on November the 5th. Uh, with that said, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, recognize the DPW Building Committee has been working diligently on this design. Uh, it's a good design. It will clean up the site, organize the site, and allow for inside storage and other activities to happen inside. It should be very beneficial to the neighborhood. Uh, with that said, I'll turn that over to Jeff to address this application in more detail. Okay, thank you. Good, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Alberti. I'm a vice president with Weston and Sampson. And I've brought some boards to give you a very brief overview of the project. Uh, we can certainly go into more detail. We have some backup boards, but I'll start with a very high level <laughs> overview uh, of the project. The first uh, board is a representation of an aerial view of the <coughs> overall site. And you can see that that site is outlined in red in the center of your screen. Uh, the site is located at 507 Buck Island Road. It's at the intersection of Buck Island Road and Townbrook Road. Uh, the site is currently the home of the DPW facility and consists of a 17.3 acre parcel. Uh, it is, as you mentioned, located in the R25 district, which indicates that a municipal use is permitted by special permit from the Board of Appeals. And the site currently has uh, several outdated buildings in, that are currently used for public works operations. Uh, this is a zoom in of the upper area where you have uh, Buck Island Road and then Townbrook Road. And you can see the buildings that are shaded in. So the buildings that are cross hatched in red represent the really the older buildings that have exceeded their useful life that we're, we're proposing to will demolish. They be, will they be demolished? Yeah, then? they'll be yeah. demolished. Okay. Then the main existing building will stay. It's the, currently the green building that exists on site over to the side. <coughs> be used for just light storage, really, not for the current main operation. And the salt storage structure that's in the lower portion will remain. That'll make way for us to develop the site. And Tony, if you can throw up the next board, oh, and the existing fuel facility will also remain. So if you could throw up the next slide. This is a proposed plan of the new public works facility. Sure. Uh, you can see again where the existing building will remain, as well as the fuel island, and the main facility now located in the center part of the upper area of the site. It's about a 37,400 square foot new public works facility. Uh, it's going to be a great improvement for the operations, great improvement for the site. Uh, it will include office space, employee facility space, locker shower toilet facilities, uh, workshop space, vehicle storage, vehicle maintenance, and wash operations. All of those operations currently. And, and I'm sorry, did you say wash operations? A vehicle wash, sorry, yes. And all of those operations currently take place, but what we're going to be doing is building a new facility that will now provide code compliance safe uh, environment to not only improve the safety of the operations, but to protect the town's investment in equipment and materials. A lot of that material is stored outdoors. We're going to be getting all that undercover, uh, improving the stormwater discharge from the site, treating that stormwater, 
uh, and greatly improving the landscaping around the perimeter of the site. Uh, we met with the site plan review team in August of this year and have incorporated uh, their comments through that process. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've been, uh, I think on the back side, no. uh, grab the floor plan. Yeah, I want real quick. Without getting into too much detail, this is the overall floor plan of the facility. And just going from the top of the page where you have your offices and employee facilities, shop areas all the way to the left, vehicle storage in the center, and the vehicle maintenance and wash on the lower level. And then we've done a very quick rendering. Tony, if you throw that one up, to show you what the facility is <coughs> at. You feel like a flight attendant. <laughs> safety briefing, right? And this is a view from Townbrook Road. And you can see a much improved facility Next compared. Next time come in a bikini, wait. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> much improved uh, facility from what exists there today. Um, so through that process, we are uh, requesting, as you said, a menu of options. There's really two ways of looking at it, special permit or potentially uh, a variance. In many cases, uh, the, the operations that exist there today, um, these are all improvements to it. So it could be that these are just done through a special permit uh, for pre-existing non-conforming use. Uh, which currently exists there today. Uh, also, uh, potentially a special permit or a variance for the parking location. And the parking location primarily has to do with parking that is located currently in front of the facility because it's on a corner lot. They have that, um, Tony, if you throw the parking one. Well, how is this going? Th this this that we're looking conceptual drawing that we're looking at here. Before you put another one up, please, sir. Sure. Uh, how is that facing? What am I, what am I looking at there? Is that town? Town, town, town Brook Road, Road. Right. yes. Okay, that's and in other words, that will be its its location and and its uh, orientation on the lot. Correct. Uh, so from Buck Island, what am I going to see? So Buck Island will be. I have a map for the. Uh, yeah. no, I I want to I, I I understand the maps there. I want to see what it's. I want to see how they're going. Right there. So we I don't have. That There's no elevation view. from that I don't side. Don't have that elevation included with this, but. There is a view here. We essentially provide a screening along here, but it's it's the same uh, types of materials, uh, but more more on the industrial side for the facility itself. You can see. Yeah. What's the height at the peak? Uh, the peak of that was at uh, I think it was 30, 33 feet. Yeah, you don't need any height relief on this. No, no height relief is needed. Correct. Right. Uh, so on the parking, we're proposing to reduce the amount of parking that uh, exists in front in front you mean at Townbrook both at Townbrook and uh, okay. along Buck, uh, Buck Island. Island correct so these are some photographs showing what exists there today yeah I see it and then Tony you have the one that shows the replacement just take that uh, yeah is that the one you meant I'm sorry yeah this just provides a general overview of the areas where we're removing some of that parking that's in front Reduced it to just a minimal amount here. Reduced the ones that were in the setback along Townbrook and actually brought them outside of the setback. Because we're on a corner lot, there was really no ability to put them behind inboard without compromising safety. Right. So I feel we've done some significant improvements to what's existed yes, right. uh, in the past and also improved on the buffers uh, throughout the site. Uh, we're looking for relief on the uh, buffer requirements, primarily in two areas, and that is so how many how many so, so, uh, parking spaces will be eliminated by this? I think it's forty. Uh, the elimination. Like a dozen or so. I thought it said forty. About twenty will, that are currently in front. They'll be not necessarily reduced. We're going to be combining them into a more compliant configuration. Well, how many total spaces? Forty. Will be? Forty total spaces. And how many are to the town, uh, uh, how many are to the, where you're now going to be putting them? Uh, uh, town Brook. How many are there now on that side of the building? Existing. Ooh, this roughly. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to say. It's a great question so because they're not lined or striped. Really they just, just simply kind of park nice. there in front. So there's right. there's got to be at least a dozen that are kind of informally parked in front right against the police maintenance building there and also over by the park wood structure uh, outside that fence area in that neighborhood. But they're not lined or marked. Okay, the six that are lined here on this map. 
Existing. Existing, right. Yeah. Okay, but there'll be no more parking in the buffer there, right? Correct. That's going to be eliminated. That's correct. All right. I'm sorry. F please go on with your presentation. Oh, I'm sure. So sorry. Okay. And then uh, we're looking for relief on the buffer requirements, uh, primarily on the eastern and western property lines. And, and Tony, if you just point uh, there and as well as along here. And we did not, uh, we're loaming and seeding those areas, but we're not providing any additional um, buffering vegetation, primarily because there's hundreds, several hundred feet of existing. Um, vegetated buffer, so we didn't feel that there was any benefit to that. Um, and then the in-lot trees in the parking area, uh, I think we've done a fairly good job of complying with it in the center island, but right along the building, we're short some of those three-inch caliper trees at 20-foot spacing, and primarily providing access to the public in that area. Uh, we felt that we would uh, prefer to request a variance instead of throwing uh, some trees right up against the building in that area. So before I forget, you told me you're going to have 40-something parking spots. Okay. They're going to be on the uh, side of the, this corner lot side facing Townbrook. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you telling me that depiction there is showing me 40 spots? Really? Yep. It's 11 here, 13 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Couple of ADA handcast spots. Okay. I don't know that that came to 40, but. That was 37, and then there's three, three right there. here. Okay. Thank you. And I think that concludes um, my summary presentation. I'm happy to get into any more details uh, if you do have questions. Ms. Britta. I'm going to bring up Mr. Martin and ask a question about the trees. Tell me again about the trees, why you're asking for variance on the in-lot trees. So we've provided um, the in-lot for the, primarily on the parking where it's three, I believe it's three inch caliber, 20 foot spacing, right. one per eight parking spots. We've provided a sufficient amount just in this island. Our understanding from going through the site plan, I think, was that uh, that island strip is supposed to be a five foot wide mm -hmm. plant strip that we don't have those trees along this front facade of the building. We only have two there. So we're looking for relief. So we're going to have to populate the front of the building with trees right up against the building. So what's the number in terms of relief? How many trees are you asking not to plant? Uh, it would be, so it would be one point we're on this side. Four and eight. So it's 16, it would be two. along this side. I guess there's some uncertain as to that 20 foot spacing requirement. They're supposed to be every 20 feet along that entire length. If that's the case, then it would probably be somewhere that uh, looks like four. Okay, so it's not a huge number. No, it's not 50% no. or anything. No, like we've, okay. we've provided a whole bunch along here where we're trying to maximize it. How many is a whole bunch? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just want to make sure I got it. One, two, three, about a dozen. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's like ten, just along here. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. Is there an entrance? There is one entrance from Buck Island into that site. Enough Buck Island, but that town. Right. Town yes, Brooke, correct. That's the one. Correct. And it takes you into the parking lot on the left. Yes. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chu. Mr. Martin. Yeah, I think it looks good. I don't. Uh, um, see any real issues in terms of, you know, the parking lot looks good, the plantings look good, you're going to maintain existing caliber trees where, where you can along the yes. Buck Island Road. Yes, we have done that, we identified that through the process. Um, this plant does show one tree in the middle there by in front of the building, is that still there? Right there? Yeah. Okay, so that's one. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, and actually the in-lot trees, um, people, you know, you've got a whole bunch down the middle aisle, so I'm not even sure that there is a requirement that it be on that side anyway. Yeah, we were actually questioning it's, that, yeah, but yeah. we wanted to be safe, and yeah. we figured we'd put in the uh, So it looks like you've got a lot of plantings going uh, through there, including some good trees, elm trees, the whole bit on the on the bigger island, so uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, the building is uh, uh, a reasonably good-looking building relevant to 
what its uh, purpose is. And uh, certainly it's on a great big site with plenty of uh, Plenty of buffering from adjacent properties. The property to the south there, that's one large lot. Is that one large resi residential piece there? It is, there? correct. Okay. All right. Um, and I know there's plenty of trees there. Not that they are, the buffer shot should have to be on their property, but uh, uh, it doesn't s seem like we're really, um, that what's planned with the grass and seed there isn't, isn't adequate enough. I'm sure the trees will be overhanging from the adjacent site anyways, as far as that goes, so. Uh, so I don't see any, uh, we're not looking for a whole lot of relief here, and I, uh, I think it's a good plan. Mr. Nicanello. Yes, thank you, and welcome. It's a very handsome project, and uh, I'm sure our town employees are going to be more motivated to go to work and show up on time. That's going to be great. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm not sure that's necessarily true, but um, I'm not motivated to go to work anymore. <laughs> Anyways, um, so it says we're going to expand the pre-existing architecture. What is the total square footage of what we have now for a building layout? Do we know? Do we know? Yes. Um, so for the main upper operations area. I was looking for total. I'm sorry. It's about twenty thousand square feet of existing buildings, not including the salt shed. I don't know what the salt shed is. Yeah, we did measure the salt shed, but the existing buildings that are being operated in employee and what's functions. The, what's the proposed square footage going to be? 37,400. 37,000, so an increase of 17,000. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Mr. Barron. Yes. Uh, I've uh, witnessed the site uh, through three uh, open houses that Mr. Colby has uh, mm -hmm. conducted. Um, and uh, I've seen the condition of uh, the present facilities and uh, the sooner that they are lost, the better. Um, I, uh, in my former life, um, uh, participated uh, or, or uh, was instrumental in getting new facilities for work crews that had worked in conditions that hadn't changed since the 1890s. Uh, and, I, and they were finally, uh, they were finally uh, demolished and replaced by modern facilities, um, uh, such as uh, proper shops for the different trades, um, uh, adequate uh, facilities for the uh, for the workers, such as uh, locker rooms, shower uh, facilities, uh, lunch rooms uh, that were decent, uh, that they didn't have to use picnic benches outside, um, and uh, decent office conditions as well. So the uh, the purpose of the project uh, and and the and the plans that have been set forth are totally, totally um, positive all the way around, and I, I totally endorse the project. I, that's all I have. Well, I think you have a beautiful project, let me tell you, okay, and, and, and that, that particular corner is um, mm. really kind of an important corner uh, in this town because it, uh, you know, on the one side of the street has at sporting facilities, and on the other side has a ridiculous looking building that's so outdated and antiquated. Uh, I wish the wind would blow it over. Uh, particularly with a brand new fire station across the road, this is gonna be a nice municipal area of uh, uh, updating and up upgrading our town's infrastructure, and for that I'm, I'm very pleased. I, I do have a couple of questions, if I can, though. The existing building that's going to remain, the use of that building is? It, the future use of it yeah. will be vehicle storage. All right. I, is there anything that's going to be done to, to try to bring that into some sort of uh, aesthetic conformity with the uh, new structure? Uh, yeah, there's a future plan to paint that to match uh, the color of the proposed building so that we can Is it a wood structure it now? It is metal. 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 Okay, because, I mean, to me, it's going to look very haphazard um, if something isn't done to... To, uh, I know you can't make them look uh, similar beyond maybe painting it, yeah. but painting it to whatever you're going to do as a color on this would certainly be something I'd want to see, okay? Sure. And it's, I mean, we're talking a couple of, you know, maybe 25, 30 gallons of paint. And 
and DPW staff to help the to help the job go along too, right? <laughs> <clears throat> No, we'll have to hire painters at exorbitant rates. Uh, to me, I think that that, that is, uh, would just lend to improving this site tremendously uh, to paint that structure in conformity with whatever color you're going to put on this, uh, this. And your depiction seems to show it almost in white. Is that the intended color? Uh, it's a more of a, we're looking at earth tones, gray tones, essentially. Okay. How, how is that uh, selected? So once we get a contractor on board, they will submit all the color options, and that will ultimately go to the building committee with um, options for them to, to select. In, um, in you, you've had no prior uh, decision on, on color? No, we had a lot of discussion about it. What we try not to do is make a selection without having the final product approved because the product offered varies from manufacturer to manufacturer but we've talked about the uh, the different palettes available to us but once we get those actual submittals we'll go through that process with color boards okay well my, my only point being that if if you're going to paint the one let's paint the both okay yep uh you know because it just uh, would seem to be uh, very unattractive to have this nice new structure and have that existing. Yep, we agree. Whatever. So um, let's make that a condition. I, I've got to tell you, I, I think the buffer relief that you're talking about, I don't even see the need for. Uh, it's there. You've requested it. I don't see the harm in granting it. Um, the uh, in lot plantings, uh, I mean, there's only so much you can do, you know, uh, and, and you've got that uh, island particularly. Uh, where the, I, I don't know, 11 on one side, I think I heard the count be uh, 11 on one side, 13 on the other. I mean, uh, there's not much more you can do in there, but do exactly what you're planning on doing. Um, and along that walkway in, is, is that what you'd call it, a walkway in? Yes. Right there? Uh, I'm looking at trees and I, uh, that would be in the lower part. Let's call it the lower part because it's lower on the plan mm -hmm. that you're showing me. Yes. So up here, if you look at your green spot, that's going to be, uh, the, will there be trees in that strip yes. as well? But that's where you actually need the relief, is it? Uh, yes, it's kind of we feel right Okay. I mean, I don't see any problem with that relief. Again, right. just the natural streetscape uh, is, is you're going to want to look at the structure a little, you know? You're not going to want to necessarily hide it all off. Uh, and with the number of cars you're putting over there, potentially putting over there. It strikes me that that's uh, uh, busy enough without adding a lot more uh, uh, to, to attract the eye. I am concerned about the height. I'm hearing that, in the, in the, in the, as was the site plan committee, uh, that uh, I'm not seeing an elevation, and I'd really like to see an elevation if you, uh, uh, I know you're not asking us to approve these plans per se, but in, in a sense you are. So I would want to see it that the that the elevation is not to exceed 35 feet. Sure. Okay, I think that's just a simple condition we can sure. put on there. And it's not because I'm not a proponent of going higher. Uh, it's just that's the height. Yep. And since I'm not seeing an elevation on your plans, uh, I, I think that would be helpful. Other than that, I've got to tell you, I, I, I feel enough long-winded this evening to, to shut up. I, I think you guys did a great job in the design of this utilitarian building, but not making it look utilitarian, and that's nice. Thank you. That's nice. So I do see uh, a, a, a good friend of this town uh, sitting in the audience. I'm not sure if he'd like to speak. Mr. Sears, did you have anything you wanted to add, pro or con, to this, since you're the last guy standing? Uh, and uh, certainly Mr. Sears is known, uh, but uh, just yeah. for those people that may be home, please uh, tell us who you are. I'm Curtis Sears. I'm, our, <clears throat> I'm actually a member of the committee also. Um, we are struggling with the budget, so, you know, I'll defer to the, the experts, but, you know, painting that building right now may be an issue. We're still waiting for bids to see if we're going to have money to do what we want to do as it is. Uh, 25 gallons of paint wouldn't be enough to do that? 
if you want to put on your coveralls, you can come on down. <laughs> well, no, I'm not interested. No, I don't. I don't know. I just want to because well, just like you said, you we have to hire experts to come in and pay them a lot of money. So yeah, but but what I am simple interested. to you and I on our house is not going to be the same case in this building. That's all. Yeah, but what I am interested in is just trying to make that thing not be uh, so ridiculous. So with one building being painted one thing and the other being painted the yeah, other, we haven't we're forgotten. spending a lot of money on of town's money on this building, and I I just don't think it's a big stretch to say paint that other building but you know if you can't do it economically then uh, you know impossibility of performance is, is a great defense yeah I would I would say you know if, if budget hampers us right away maybe in a free cash grant in the in the near future we could pick that up I don't know but I would just consider the cost of that right now with the tr you know we're struggling yes. with the budget on this project because it's it's running away faster than we can get everything done and approved all right, so how about if we say cost permitting? What I, I, yeah, I think I agree with Jeff. I think it's going to get done. I just don't know if it's going to be absolutely on the time frame that we're working on with this new building, too. Right, if I, I might add, we have a healthy contingency, and if we can you know, properly manage that through the project and there aren't a lot of uh, change orders, we certainly something yeah. that could be considered. We'd like to do it. Yeah. We've talked about that also. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well... never seems that there's enough money to do that, those projects that we want to do. It always strikes me as odd that we can build things, but we don't have the money to build them, you know? <laughs> That's why we have a, Somehow it's about a trillion dollar debt going this year, right? Mortgage. Would you say it's like a mortgage? Yeah, <laughs> it's a mortgage to our future. Yeah, listen, great project. Uh, the, I'd, I'd really like to see at least something be stated that you got a good intention to do it when the co when you can cost afford it, and that the elevation not to exceed 35 feet. And those are the only two conditions that I could think of. Uh, anybody else have any concerns about any aspect no, of the, the, the landscaping is going to be irrigated? Yes. Okay. What's going to be irrigated? Landscaping. All the new plantings. Yes. And I don't see why uh, each of the reliefs sought uh, uh, isn't appropriate. The parking certainly, I think, does require a variance, doesn't it? And uh, the in lot trees is probably a variance as well. So uh, let's take them. Uh, just another quick question: um, the, ar the area to the east, the, the, you know, these buffers to the east, I'll call it, and to the kind of uh, west southwest um, that we're just loaming and seeding, and they do not have the have the tree plantings, which, based on what's there, I don't have a real problem with. the The easterly side is that owned by the uh, condominium? Is that open space part of the the condominium? Yes, it, it's uh, the yeah. Eastleys Buck Island Village Condominium. Okay. There's a lot of woods there. That's their ownership, so there's a right. good buffer there. Yeah. All right, and the lot to the southwest there, I guess, is just one house there on a very large lot. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay, so they're properly buffered at least at their own cost, so to speak. Um, okay, those are my questions. All right, so the relief you're seeking is uh, uh, relative to a uh, use, yep. and that is because you're uh, seeking to uh, implement a municipal use in a residential district. Well, that's already an existing use. I don't think we have any uh, issue about that, and that can be done by special permit. Uh, on anybody prepared to make a motion on a special permit to grant relief of, of the use uh, table, uh, you know, the uh, commercial use, uh, uh, municipal use in an R? Uh, 25 zoning district. Ooh. Mr. Uh, Barron moves. Mr. Martin seconds. And do we need any discussion on that before proceeding along to a vote? It's certainly not going to create any undue hazard nuisance nor congestion. Nor will it be more detrimental. I think it would be a great improvement to the town character and neighborhood and, na and the neighborhood's character. So that is special permit. Permit. Use on that motion made by uh, Mr. Barron, seconded by Mr. Martin, uh, to grant the requested uh, relief for the use table uh, constrictions. So please, all those indicate, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. Let's go to uh, parking areas again. I think that that. I think that requires an, uh, a, a, a variance. Does anybody disagree with that? Or? Nope. Uh, nope. All right, so parking, uh, 
you know, I think that in terms of uh, uh, the front of the building, there's no other real way to do the, the parking on this site uh, because of the nature of the structure you're putting up and as well because the, how the property essentially has two front uh, two fronts, uh, one on Buck Island and one on town, uh, uh, Townhouse Road. Town Brook, excuse me, Road. I don't know why I want to insist on calling it a house. I apologize. So, the, you know, as a practical matter, I think the shape and topography of the lot certainly lend uh, to uh, the need to uh, allow parking uh, in, in a uh, front uh, of the structure, if you can call it the front. I'd call it the side, but what the heck. Um, in any event, uh, I see no other alternative for the site, which is already uh, burdened by uh, a haphazard look, uh, which really allows parking in the same vicinity, and you're doing a great job in reducing some of that parking, particularly by paying, staying off of that buffer strip. So in my mind, the criteria uh, is met. Uh, the, we are not uh, derogating from the uh, literal enforcement uh, uh, of the uh, zoning bylaws by doing this. This is a unique location. It's not going to be a, a problem with commercial applications, I suggest. Mr. Chairman, sorry for another quick interruption. I forgot to ask before. Uh, there was something in the site plan review saying that uh, there was a question as to whether the parking spaces were adequate for the number of square footage for occupants. Is that, do, yeah. do you need relief from that as well? Uh, no, we yeah. do not. No. Okay. All right. So is anybody prepared to make a motion on the uh, variance for concerning the parking areas? Mr. Barrett, uh, Mr. Nicanello has moved. And is there a second? Second. Mr. Martin has seconded. Does the board care to have any discussion before moving along to a vote? Hearing none, all those in favor of the grant of a variance concerning the parking areas in the front of the municipal building, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Do we get eyes? Those opposed? Carries unanimously. So, where are you heading to? <laughs> you need a minute? We need your vote, so we'll hold. I thought we just voted. Oh, okay, we can keep going if you don't want. Sure. If you don't want to participate, that. Can't wait. I can't wait, that's okay. <laughs> side, side, side yard screening. <laughs> side yard screening, uh, unfortunately, I guess, is uh, well, let's go to in lot trees, okay, because I think on the in lot trees we can agree that yep. that requires a variance as well. Yep. It may, yep. And I think that you have in adequate in lot trees. I think that to. Uh, 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 cause you to uh, plant more and expand those uh, beds, uh, those island areas uh, adjacent to the building would cause a squeezing of those into the um, the buffer zone that I'm much more concerned about on Club uh, Town House Road uh, than uh, seeing a few less trees in the lot. Uh, and I think, the law, uh, again, the enforcement of uh, the uh, bylaws uh, in this particular case uh, uh, would uh, uh, be... Uh, uh, a disadvantage uh, to this whole project. So, uh, and literal enforcement of the zoning bylaws would certainly not de uh, derogate from the uh, uh, in nature and intent of the bylaws as we have them. I'm sorry I have to go through this silly litany, but you know you do, okay? So, uh, in, in terms of the variance uh, for in lot tree relief, uh, and specifically that is uh, concerning lots, uh, trees along the, uh, adjacent to the building itself, right? That's the only place you're looking for relief. So is anybody prepared to make a motion on the variance request for relief from in-lot trees along the building side only? Second. Mr. Nicanello and Mr. Martin. Anybody want to talk about it before going to a vote? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. And so we come to the last, and um, again, I think, unfortunately, it's, it's a uh, variance, uh, side yard screening. Uh, so side yard screening is uh, particularly to the back portion that you've shown us there with a, a substantial amount of wooded area behind and to the side, or I just don't see even north, would that be easterly side? Yep. Uh, so to the rear. Uh, Sideline screening. And that would be south and east sides. Thank you there, Mr. Nicanella. Side, uh, south and east side lines. And again, with all that's there existing, 
and with a very strong likelihood that there's never going to be any other closer encroachers within to this area uh, that would be bothered by uh, in less uh, less uh, a less grand buffering buffering than what we're looking at. Uh, I, I think that uh, again we can uh, grant the uh, variance uh, because uh, the lot is uh, its nature, shape, and topography uh, permit us to do that. So uh, on that uh, uh, requested relief, is somebody prepared to make a motion for the grant of variance? Mr. Nicanello has uh, so moved. In second. Mr. Martin has seconded. Does the board care to have any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the grant of that variance uh, for side and uh, side and rear, I guess we'll call it, uh, buffering, uh, uh, please, uh, relief, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. Gentlemen, a decision will be drafted. <clears throat> when are you breaking ground? Oh, no. 2025. <laughs> well, we'll be opening bids next week, uh, yeah. and as I mentioned before, we've got the two important uh, elements associated with the approval, both at the October 29th town meeting and then the 11th sure. uh, five ballot question. Uh, yeah. Shortly after, we expect to award it, and I would expect the contractor within a matter of weeks at that point to mobilize and want to start clearing the site. All right, a, a decision will be drafted. <clears throat> I, I want you to realize that on each of those votes, those two conditions were already discussed and would be concluded, okay? So uh, with respect to um, the decision, I'll draft it as quick as I can. We'll get it filed with the town clerk's office. 20 days must elapse before that con a decision is considered final. Uh, that's a technical waiting period. I don't anticipate any appeals, nor do I suspect you. Uh, so therefore, 20 days uh, once uh, that elapse, uh, elapses the uh, four uh, areas of relief need to be brought to the uh, Registry of Deeds and Constable and uh, recorded. I'm going to make it all on one decision so that you, the town doesn't have to incur the cost of four uh, recordings at the registry, okay? Thank, thank you. All right, thank you, gentlemen, all. Yeah, thank good you. night. Thank you. And with that, we move to adjourn the meeting, and we yep. have so, therefore so adjourned. So adjourned.